Hi guys, so I'm still recording on my webcam, as you can see. I tried recording on my mobile, it did not work so well. It records like a minute and then it decides to just stop, so also the sound quality is horrible. Anyway, today, February 6th, is Time to Change Day, which is a campaign to get people talking about mental health because really mental illness shouldn't be any more shouldn't be ashamed of mental illness any more than people should be ashamed of having diabetes or anything i don't think people should be ashamed no matter what illness that they've got so that's what time change is about and i thought to start time change i would talk about my own experience with mental illness so thinking back, the earliest I can remember and <laughs> in retrospect realise it was a problem, I was 10 years old. 10. I was that young. I would... Well, I was 10 or 11. I went to America and when I came back, I came back with this pen knife from Mount Rainier. It does nothing. It's a butter knife, if that. And I used to hold it to my hand and I would insult myself that I can drag it and cause a cut. I would call myself a coward and say, you hurt so much, but you can't hurt yourself. You can't... I don't know why, but I saw it as something that I should aspire to, something I needed to do, and I called myself a coward for not doing it. Anyway, the years passed. I had... I don't know what happened, but I was happy. I made friends. And then suddenly I was back in that place at about the ages of 15, 16, 17. At the age of 17, I started self-harming properly. I used this, it's just a letter opener. I don't think you can see it. I have scars on my legs, just a couple on my legs. I've got seven on my arm. And those are just the cuts that actually scarred. Um, I went through CBT, so yay. <laughs> that helped me get a lot better along with the adifluoxetine, which is an SSRI, serotonin reuptake inhibitor. I can do a quick video on what that is if you want me to. Um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. And um, I got really, really happy and motivated and so full of energy and there were these power in my veins. It was just, I was just so happy and I felt like I could, I had huge money problems and I was, this is the only time in my life I've actually been kind of responsible with money, but I just, I was, I've always been lucky, I just thought nothing bad would really happen and I was lucky. I had a lot of help from my family, so. And I just kind of felt like bad things happened, but that I was indestructible. And then second year at uni, I calmed down. Third year at uni, oh my God, I have, that's when I gained a lot of weight. Third year at uni, I was tied to a desk all the time, or I was at my boyfriend's. I have absolutely, had absolutely low self-esteem. I just felt, inadequate in all ways. I felt so stupid. I felt like I couldn't do the work that I was meant to be doing. Nothing that I did was good enough. I was resisting the urge to self-harm again, which I have to admit I did once or twice. I was binge eating to deal with the stress and it just wasn't pleasant. And I was in absolute denial. I told myself it was just the stress that at the end of the year it would be over but the end of the year came it didn't happen my graduation day the day that you're meant to be really really happy with yourself because you know you've completed uni I spent all day putting on a smile and just thinking it would be a good day if I didn't completely hate myself all day and there were my family and friends and they were just so happy and proud of me and I couldn't be. Anyway, I went to the doctors <laughs> and you know, it was like a six month 
waiting list to go see mental health doctors in this country six weeks and I know from previous experience within the matter of just a couple of weeks you can start self-harming a couple more and you can start having suicidal thoughts by the time I had help the first time I was collecting pills because I wanted to commit suicide in retrospect I don't think I was anywhere near that stage but it comforted me to think I was at the time um, anyway, so, that, you know, that summer after graduation, it was like September by the time I saw the doctors, I'd calmed down. Um, I was a lot less upset with myself. I felt kind of normal, not happy, but normal. Like, I had, it was so much easier to be happy when I was around my friends and I was enjoying things again. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I was kind of diagnosed with bipolar but because my previous pattern is that each episode lasts a couple of years to a year so I was depressed for a while and then I was stable for a couple of years and I was depressed for a couple of years and then I was like hypermanic for a year and I was depressed for a year (laughs) and then I was normal for a year, stable for a year and then I was depressed for a year and then they think I'm supposed to be stable now so it's lifestyle controlled which makes it feel completely not real I feel like I'm lying telling you that but (laughs) it actually happened I went to the doctors and they said that um the positives that came out of this is every time that I have personally realized that I had depression that first slash second time first time I was diagnosed with it I got help really quickly. It greatly improved my quality of life. And I mean, I think the main reason that my bipolar hasn't been, I use that not because I don't think it exists, because it's not that I disagree with it, it's just that it doesn't feel real. Uh, It's because I do all the things that they tell me to anyway, like whether I'm tired or not, I go to bed at the same time because I have to wake up early. I don't really drink that much that often. Uh, I don't do drugs, that kind of thing. I am, um, I'm weird, but I try and keep myself controlled. And talking about it, the support from my friends has been amazing. I mean, you're always going to get the odd person who doesn't understand, and that's what this campaign is about to to help people understand. So I really hope that if any of you have any anything that is upsetting you whether or not you think it's on the scale of something like depression or anxiety you talk to someone about it because it helps and if you do think that you have you know any kind of mental illness whether it be anxiety or depression or even bipolar anything that you think you might have you should definitely go talk to a doctor because even if they disagree with you or come up with a different diagnosis you can understand yourself better and what's going around you better going on around you better so please if you think that one of your friends may be suffering don't wait for them to bring it up because it is one of the hardest things to bring up and to talk about even if you really want to talk about it so thank you for listening that is my story as so far yeah (laughs) thank you